Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and this is part two of a two-part series. In part one, I demonstrated how to use the pivot table to create a frequency report to answer a simple question. The question from our manager was, Danny, how many small invoices do we process? Now, I generally approach a question as a question behind a question. In other words, what's the manager looking for? They're thinking of uh, implementing a minimum order policy. So I quickly created a copy of the original pivot table. And in the copy, I used one field and one field only, but I used it three times. First, and this may seem counterintuitive, I took a numeric field from the underlying data set and I placed it into the row labels. I took advantage of the Excel pivot table's ability to group. So this is how we can create a frequency distribution. In this case, I took Excel's default settings of the starting net and ending net. In other words, it went through and analyzed the underlying data set for the invoice total and found that the smallest invoice was $150, the largest invoice in the underlying data set, $37,200. I made the choice to increment these ranges for the frequency report by $5,000. Now over here, I took invoice total, I dragged it into the values, but I changed the name. I used the value field settings to change the name from sum of invoice total to revenue. Use the sum function and there you go. I dragged it over a second time and this time I changed the subtotal function from sum to count. So as I look at this as we're going to transform from answering a simple question to presenting the information in our data to upper management, I need to look at three things. Number one, I need to reduce the number of bins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I want to reduce the number of bin sizes. As I look at this, you see how the number of invoices tapers off after $25,000. So that's going to be my first approach. What I'm going to do is come back here, right mouse click, return to group, and this time I'm going to override the default selection. So I'm going to start at one and I want to end at the $25,000 level. Why am I ending at $25,000? Because when I look at my first frequency report, I can see the numbers dramatically drop off after that. I'll leave the increments at $5,000. Click OK. So you see how I've reduced the number of ranges that I'm going to present. Now, large numbers present a problem. I mean, there are too many digits to comprehend. We're presenting the big picture here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a custom format. So select any cell, it really doesn't matter, in this field. Right mouse click, return to value field settings. And I bring up the value field settings dialog box. What I want to change is the number format. Now, we're looking at millions of dollars in the original. So I'll come down here to custom and let's create a custom format. I do want to include the dollar sign and I want to have one digit before the decimal point, one after the decimal point. I'm going to use my first comma to indicate the million dollar separator and I'll use the second comma to indicate the thousand dollar separator. And then I want to include inside double quotation marks M for million. Click OK and then click OK a second time to close the dialog box. So you see that's a much easier number to understand. We're looking at the big picture over here. Now what I need to do in this instance of copy and invoice total is I need to simplify this title. That's too unwieldy and I need to put in a thousand separator. Again, select any value in that field, right mouse click, value field settings, and let's change the title. Let's both call this invoice count. And we'll come into the number format. And in this case, I'll use accounting zero decimal places and none. So I have the thousand separator put in there. Click OK, click OK. So that is a much easier uh, table to present. 
But I'm still thinking that perhaps the upper management would like to look at these numbers instead of individual numbers. They'd like to see it as a percentage of the whole. So let's make a copy of the pivot table. And you can save yourself a lot of time and a lot of memory resources when you do this. Just select a single cell inside the pivot table. And I'm using Excel 2010. This applies in Excel 2007 as well. Come up to the contextual pivot table tools options. Choose select to select the entire pivot table. Use the keyboard shortcut control C to place a copy of the pivot table on the clipboard. And then let's come down here, right mouse click, and paste a copy of it. Now I always like to confirm that it is a copy of the pivot table, not the value. So I see the pivot table field list over here. Now in this case what I want to do is instead of presenting the numbers as simplified as they are, I want to present them as a percentage of the whole. In other words, a percentage of the column. Now one really terrific improvement in Excel 2010 is that we use the right mouse click and come down here to the show values as. Look at all these options that are presented for us. So I want to choose the percentage of the column. And there you go. So now I have what bin, what range, between invoices between $1 and $5,000. They're 8% of our total revenue. Now let's simplify this. Let's take away the two decimal points at the end. Once again, value field settings come in to the number format. It is a percentage, and we just want to show it with zero decimal places. Now, I'm going to show you how to perform that same calculation, that same percentage of column, by doing it the standard way. So before Excel 2010 simplified it with that right mouse click, summarize values by, I'm sorry, by show values as, here's what we had to do. We needed to go into the value field settings, and most people never got this far. They never went over here to the show values as, and then once they got the show values as, we'll say, well, nothing's really changed. You need to also click this drop down. So to show it as a percentage of the column, and then while we're here, let's change the number format to percentage, zero decimal places, and then click OK and click OK. So there you go. So again, we've got options and we might decide to present both of the pivot tables side by side. So you see how we can transform data into information. Now, if you are using Excel 2003, let me show you how you can bring up that show values as. Let's right mouse click, come into the field settings, and again, come into the pivot table field list. And what we want to do in this case, and this is not, not, not easy to remember, come into options, and then from options do the show values as. So here is the percentage of column. And then when we click OK, there you go. We have that percentage of column. So there are so many improvements that have been made beginning with Excel 2007 and continuing with Excel 2010, including up here to be able to see the show values as from one of the commands on the ribbon. So now you've seen how we can answer a simple question and then we can answer a follow up question. We can answer a question, but then presenting the information inside the data is something that a pivot table is very, very, very good at. And I'll look for you in the next lesson.